York's Inner Sanctum. The jockey's room, Dale, this must bring back a few happy memories. Yeah, it does. It's, uh, it doesn't seem like two and a half years ago since I sat on this very spot to weigh out for my last ride. Um, time's flown since then, but it's, uh, it's a cracking weighing room, Tom. Um, it's even got something about it that not a lot of other weighing rooms have. It's atmosphere here, though, Dale, isn't it? It's full of character, this place. And, and you know, what, what you think of when you come in here is the great jockeys who've, who've stepped out of here to ride great horses out on a great race course. Absolutely. And fair play to William. A couple of years ago, um, he decided to uh, reinvest money, as he's done throughout with prize money and general facilities. Uh, and he gave the jocks uh, a, new, a new area at the back, a new comfy area just to get out of the way of the valets yeah. where the food is. Um, and spent quite a lot of money on a number of upgrades. You've seen the photographs, you've seen the, the general standard of everything here. And it just creates a good atmosphere before you go out and ride. Yeah, and, and the whole thing here as well is that, 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 that you know, the, the great times that people have had here, you know, a lot of them are recorded on the walls round about. And, and it means a lot to, for jockeys to ride winners here, whether they be small winners or big winners. There's not too many small ones, obviously, <laughs> yeah. but they can be very big winners. It just means a lot to have on your CV York winners. Absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt. And they've, uh, they've incorporated a number of finishes here just with the photographs. And, you know, when any, anybody had a winner here as a jockey, you know, even if it was, you know, the, the, the lowest nursery, which again would be very difficult to win, you know, pat on the back and, you know, you were the King Kong until the next race. And it certainly meant something at any meeting. And you've seen how York have improved things with prize money over the last couple of years. And boy, it's hard to win anything here. We'll leave the character and the tradition of the weighing room behind, Dale. But the challenges for every jockey are basically out on the track. Let's go and have a look. The famous Knavesmire. Dale, it's called Knavesmire for a reason, because indeed it is a mire. What peculiarities do you feel that that sort of brings to a race course? Well, certainly pre uh, the drainage work was done here three, four years ago, there were days when um, the excess rain and the fact that the drains were sort of past their sell-by date had, a, had a, a real effect on how you're going to ride your race. Since then, and the fact that it's all tied up and draining so much better and in fantastic condition, I think now you're still looking for the, sh the quickest strip of ground, but the fact that you're really still trying to get from A to B as quick as you possibly can. Certain days do differ from others. But do you feel that this is a track that you could basically walk uh, and then it rides slightly differently. Absolutely. Um, there are days when you'd walk it and you'd think there was a favoured strip um, and you'd be right. And there were days that you'd walk it and think there was a favoured strip and after a couple of races that, that had completely disappeared. And obviously half a tonne of horse is different to you and I walking up and down it with a stick. Well, it's just when you come out here and it's the wide expanse of this track and the absolute flatness of it that is startling. Oh, absolutely. It's only when you actually walk the track and you've almost got to get down to ground level to appreciate the, uh, the speed element of York, particularly on the sprint track and, and how beautifully level it is. It's, it's bowling green stuff, you know, almost like a, like a snooker table and uh, it's in fantastic condition. You know, the, the rainfall that was in April this year compared with hardly any last year. It's been a challenging year already for York, but we've heard from William Darby and, and they've coped with it admirably. And, and, you know, we need to go down there now. And, 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 you know, the moisture in this ground, but it is absolutely spot on, isn't it, really? And the growth of Grassdale, which wasn't there last year, not just here, but in lots of other tracks. Absolutely. I mean, we've got to remember that the, the whole place was dug up, relayed, redrained, what, three and a half years ago. And it's probably taken that time took the whole thing to bed in. Um, the first year that it was laid down, one or two instances where it was a little bit loose. The second year, again, one or two instances were a little bit loose. And then coming here last year, you saw the improvement. And to look at this now, and I've been coming here pre-race for probably 10 years now, firstly in my capacity as Northern Safety Officer, uh, and now we're obviously with the PJA and overseeing that, this is absolutely fantastic. It's the best I have ever seen it. I mean, we've had an extraordinary last six weeks of weather from going from drought yeah. to monsoon conditions. And um, it's a testament to, to, to William and his staff here to, to get the track in, in such wonderful conditions a week before we start. And, you know, going back to sort of the, the, the challenges facing jockeys, you only have to look down the track here again. The <coughs> flatness is the one thing that strikes you. And the fact that that is really a speed horse's course. It is. Um, 
when you ride a horse here over five and six furlongs, wherever you are drawn, you are conscious of bouncing out as well as you possibly can and holding a position. You may not be able to lead, you may not be able to sit second or third, but very rarely over five and six furlongs do you come from five or six lengths off the pace. You've mm. got to be relatively handy and traveling. And it, it's a track where over five and six, you know your destiny within a reasonably short space of time. Mm. Whereas a galloping track with a real stiff finish, you can suddenly come good in the last hundred yards. Very rare does one suddenly come good here in the last hundred yards. Um, but to be perfectly honest, when you look across the expanse from one rail to the other, it's a very fair track. Yes. Really fair track. The best horse wins. And on the round course, Dale, do you find that again speed is 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 the most sort of the real prerequisite, really, because you need to be handy enough here. You do. I mean, you're not saying that everyone's going to try and overcook it. There were a couple of instances last year over a mile, a mile a quarter, where in big fields, wild two up front, just slightly overdid it. But it's a fine line between overdoing it and just having your position early on. Um, a lot of it is knowing your horse, but knowing that when you can attack here, sometimes you can go too soon. But at the same time, if you've got a position early, you want to hold that position, Tom. You don't want to be giving it up to the guy next door and it all goes silent. Your best mate's in the weighing room, but you've got the position A here at York, you're not going to give it up. And four and a bit furlongs in the home straight here seems an eternity, uh, but it isn't because horses cannot come from too far back here. And if, unless you're on, on the pace or just barely off it, you certainly need to be hanging on to the shirt tails. You ain't going to come from, an, from, from, from the tail enders. You're not. And even if you're just niggling, but you're within two or three lengths of the lead horse, it's not the worst thing in the world. You're not expecting every horse to go through thoroughly on the bridle and win as it likes. As long as you're building up momentum here, Tom, that momentum can keep you going forward. And maybe with a, t with a green two-year-old, if you happen to have one rail, close to you, yeah. it's a big thing because we've got a huge expanse of ground here, massive big grandstand, generally speaking a huge crowd. You know, one Are you aware, you aware of that as a jockey? Um, You're sort of coming into a bit of a funnel, a bit of a, you know, that intense sort of uh, noise and, and, and colour and atmosphere? Yeah, a little bit. Um, I mean, certainly if you don't get a buzz riding at York, you shouldn't be riding, to be perfectly honest. Um, it's a wonderful amphitheatre, um, just the whole atmosphere the whole race day from getting on your horse in the paddock to cantering down to the stalls opening the whole thing but you're not really aware that much of the crowd the one thing you're aware of is that winning post over there but the one thing that that, that it may even frustrate punters sitting at home but they see jockeys from the round course and they turn for home and time and again not all the time but time and again they come out to the middle of the track sometimes on softer ground, come over right to the stand <coughs> side. What, what's your philosophy on that? Um, I think sometimes it's a preconception here at York because obviously we've only had the, the new turf down three or four years now. And certainly towards the end of the old course with the, with the old structure, there were days when you kind of had to do it because the drainage had passed its sell-by date and, and it was ready for the, for, the, for the new stuff going in. Since then, I still feel that on occasions, if someone's done their homework beforehand, and some jockeys are walking the track now, more than they used to be, mm. that you can gain an advantage, as I preach to apprentices and conditionals now in my role with the PJA, walk the course. Because if you can find a length's advantage, yeah. or even half a length's advantage, it might be here, right by this rail, yeah. right by this rail. It may be in the center of the track, it may be on the far side, or on many occasions, there's no difference, Tom. Yes. There's no difference, and it depends where you're sat in the race. If you're in front and you're slowing things up on the round track, you can dictate where you want to go. I was lucky enough to win a listed race here on a horse called Caracciola, yeah, the year I retired in 2009. There was no pace in the race, and I popped out, got the rail, slowed them right up, slowed them right up, and kicked off the turn, and I had the rail, and what I thought, only by a short head, mind you, was the best bit of ground, and he won. And it was a great buzz for me. Yeah, it sure. was 12. Yeah. And little instances like that, where you're not necessarily on the best horse, but if you're giving it a bit of thought beforehand, and you're thinking, how am I going to get my opposition beat, 
It's all about beating your opposition, Tom, as well. But do you think that people, uh, that jockeys, instead of going the shortest way from A to B, as indeed sticking to the inside rail, do you think it's become fashion, if you like, to go out wider? And how much of that is to gain a clear run, if you like, and not run the risk of getting trapped up this rail? Yeah, there is that as well, and I have seen it, and I've also seen it, funnily enough, at places like Newmarket with shed loads of room, where um, you know you might even get three groups in certain races. But certainly, because of um, the possibility of, you say, interference and the possibility of getting a suspension, that has crept into the riding side of it now, Tom. My gut feeling is each race is different, the ground conditions in each race are different and your horse is different. Um, and I just think a combination of all those factors, you are going to get different results. And I'm sure if you're, if you're a regular punter, particularly at York, there's days when you scratch your head and think, I wonder what the jockey was thinking there. But ultimately, he's the guy in charge while the race is on. But if we saw, just for a sake of argument, come the Dante Festival, if we saw a couple of races, particularly a high profile race, one on the round course by somebody dashing up that inside rail. Do you think, the way jockeys think, that that would set the seal on the season and it would put to bed, if you like, the fact that the best place to be, perhaps, might be out in the middle? Yeah, yeah I do, absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt. And it could well be this year because of the fact that we've had this extra period of time for the turf to bed in. Mm. You know, that may be a factor. Yeah. It's like our lawn at home. If you suddenly relay it, it's going to take a little while for it to look great. Yeah. And it's the same with, with, with York here. You know, we, we are on a Knavesmire. Um, it has a, a, a 17 days of racing every year. It's a very popular track for runners, Tom. Very rarely do you come here and there's five and six runner races, let's face mm. it. The sprints are always full. Everyone wants to be either in the stand or in the winner's enclosure or back the winner here. It's a big thing, being at York and having some success. Um, and yeah, you're going to get different results, but you only need one winner and you're on cloud nine. In a nutshell, Dale, what is the ideal horse for York, say, from uh, six and seven furlong races? Five, six, seven and five, races. Five, six and seven, the ability to uh, jump and hold a position to, to have natural early speed, even if you don't want to lead, mm. you can be sat second and have natural third, have natural speed. And travel. And to travel. I mean, mm. I know it's, if everyone say, well, that's the same at every track. You know, you can get away with it at a lot of other places by a different type of horse. But here, over five, six and seven, it's about speed. It's a speed track over those distances. And for longer races, shall we say, from, from say, a mile and a quarter upwards, EBA type horses, what do you need? Yeah, I mean, you know, from a mile and a quarter to a mile and six, obviously you can get away with it over a mile and six because it's more about stamina. But at the same time, um, you've still got to have a horse who you're not having to hunt along the whole time. Mm. Because in the races like the Magnet Cup, and the Ebor and plenty of other seriously competitive mile a quarter and up handicaps, there will be full fields. And, and if you lose your position, it's a big, big ask to then gain that position. Even though we've got a four furlong straight here and it may pan out that it works for you, it's, it's maintaining that position around here. And, and whenever I was riding here, nine times out of 10, you knew your orders beforehand, realistically, if you've ridden the horse beforehand, but it was getting that position and maintaining that position and the position every jockey wants to be in when they get down about to here, half a furlong from home, is that jam stick just up there and that is the thrill of riding on any course but particularly a course like York. Absolutely and uh, you generally knew your fate sort of here where we stood a hundred yards from the line and there would be occasions when you were a length clear and you were praying to hit the line in front without a shadow of a doubt because you could hear the pack coming. Um, particularly in a sprint race when there's five or six with a chance at the half furlong marker and there might be one or two over there, your opposition might be right up against you, Tom. Yeah. Or one, you didn't want one to sneak up the rail, so you're conscious if you had the rail, hold the rail. Don't be drifting off the rail. Doesn't often happen here because the bend naturally goes left-handed. But uh, yeah, this is, this is where you start getting excited, half a furlong out.